Okay, this is problem number four. Let's do A. It says convert each quadratic function to vertex form by completing the square. So they tell you that you need to complete the square for these. And I've been hammering that step one. Please do this. Everyone should have this step. x squared plus 4x plus our blank minus 1 because that's what we've set aside and then minus our blank. Okay, so that's step one, adding in your blanks. Step two is looking at our coefficient. Well, this problem's nice. Our coefficient in front of the x squared is 1, so we can move on to the next step. y equals x squared plus 4x plus what would complete, complete the square? Remember, you take half of 4, which is 2, and then square it. So that's 4. We have our minus 1. And then if we added 4, you need to subtract 4. So now we can do the last step here. Factor these first three terms. So we get x plus 2 times x plus 2. And I'm writing it out just so everyone can see that this turns into x plus 2 squared. That's why we complete the square. And then these little terms over here that um, are still there, we can just simplify. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. So our final equation will be y equals x plus 2 quantity squared minus 5. And that's in vertex form. And then it says identify the vertex. Now remember, vertex form, and I'll write it at the top. Vertex form is y equals x minus h squared plus k. So you need to have a minus h. So we need to write this as x minus a negative 2 quantity squared plus negative 5. Now we can see we have the minus, x minus, and we have the plus. So all you have to do now is take the h and the k. So negative 2 and then negative 5. And that's our vertex for the first one. Okay, for the second problem, do step one still, always, when you're completing the square, do step one, which is writing in your blanks. So y equals 7x squared minus 42x plus our blank. We're moving this 23 off to the side and then minus whatever we added on to complete the square. Now the second part is the tricky part. We need to look at the coefficient. Here we see that it's 7. So we need to factor that out. Now when I say factor it out, you need to factor it out of the first three terms. So if we factor it out, we get 7. x squared is left. Do not forget to divide it negative 42 by 7 too because we're pulling it out of that. So negative 6x is left from there. And then our blank. And then the plus 23 and minus the blank is left. Now we're on to completing the square. So half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So 9 is what will complete the square. Now this is a tricky part. Normally we would just subtract 9. However, this 7 affects the 9. You have to take 7 times 9. That will give us 63. So instead of subtracting 9 over on the right, we have to subtract 63. So we have 7. I'm going to rewrite this x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 23 minus 63. Now we can factor these three terms. So we have 7 out front. These would factor to x minus 3 times x minus 3. And then 23 minus 63 turns into negative 40, simplifies. And then the last step is to writing this as that perfect binomial. So 7 times x minus 3 quantity squared minus 40. And they ask for the vertex after you write in vertex form. And the vertex up at the top needs to be x minus a number and then plus k. So we have x minus already, but we need to write it as plus a negative 40. So our vertex 
is this 3 and then negative 40. So these are two problems that will be on the quiz tomorrow so make sure that the first one you're completing the you're leaving your blank spots and then completing the square. The second one write out step one just like you did in the first one but make sure you factor out whatever that coefficient is in front of the x squared and that comes out of the first three terms. So don't just do it out of the first term, it comes out of the negative 42x and that blank spot.